Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Engineer Hussein Mwasapi and in this video we'll be looking at rates of change. Alright, so before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Alright, let's get to it. Now when it comes to rates of change, in most cases what you need to understand is that if a quantity, let's say Y, depends on another quantity, say X, then the rate of change of the first quantity with respect to the second quantity will be given by dy over what? dx. Now it's not a mandate or let me say a usual thing that you always find y and x as the variables that are in, that are in question. At times you might find different variables. Let's say if you have a quantity uh, w depends on another quantity v then the rate of change of the first quantity with respect to the second quantity will be given by dw over dv just like that you might also have a case where you have even random variables like a and b then it will be da over what db like that it's just that in most cases y and x are usually used that's why we have y and x so that's why we use dy over dx now i need you to understand that in most cases when it comes to rates of change mostly what you would find in common problems is that you have maybe displacement which is x we know displacement is literally the distance moved in a particular direction since it's the application of differentiation, you'd find that once you differentiate displacement, what you will get is known as velocity. So you will get a function of velocity, which depends on another variable. If you differentiate velocity, you will get another quantity called acceleration. For instance, if you have the function of displacement with respect to time given as say four let me use something simple let's say two t cubed or plus one if you differentiate this function the displacement function with respect to time you know you will say dx over dt now the change in displacement over period of time is simply referred to as velocity and if I differentiate my displacement function here by using the technique called the power rule we'll get 6t squared so this right here is a function of velocity with respect to what time now what happens next is that since we have the function of velocity here with respect to time if i decide to differentiate my velocity function say dv over dt which is a change in velocity over a period of time we'll get the quantity called acceleration by using a common technique on this function which is the power technique now it doesn't necessarily mean that you always use the power depends on the function that you have at times you can also use the quotient rule the product rule or any other technique that you have learned so if you differentiate the velocity function you get the acceleration function which will be 12 t like that so differentiating displacement gives you velocity differentiating velocity gives you acceleration now there are many quantities that would depend on one and the other it could be our case that we have displacement and velocity or velocity depending with time in the case where we find the acceleration there are several types of uh, scenarios just understand that you might have one quantity that depends on the other and the notation that you're supposed to use are these basic notations that we have written at times you might be given some random functions let's say you have b uh, which is of respect to w is maybe equivalent to negative 4 
W plus 2. This is B with respect to W. We don't even know what these quantities are. It's just a random thought. So if I was to differentiate this function, I will use the common, let me not say the common, the, the basic notation where we say DB over what? DW. Because I am differentiating the function of B with respect to what? W. In most cases, you'd find that the function of B will just be written as B is equal to negative 4W plus 2. That's why when we write the form DB over DW, if I had to pull out the B in this case, let's say the B was there, it implies that I'm having D over DW of the function of B, which is minus 4W plus 2. And then whatever I'll get here would be its derivative. So in our case, it's basically that we are literally going towards this scenario where we say db over dw, which will give you minus 4 as a derivative. So basically, this is the analogy or the concept behind rates of changes. So about you understanding how a quantity that you might have can depend on another uh, quantity because they will vary. And this rate of change will be given in, a, in, in such a case like we have done. And let's look at an example that will help us understand what we're trying to explain. We have been told that the distance x, which is in meters, moved by a car in a time t in seconds, is given by the function, which is here. Now, I've been told to determine the velocity, not just that, as well as the acceleration, given initial conditions, which is the time to be zero seconds, and uh, basically the time to also be 1.5 seconds. So, to start with, we'll look at uh, velocity. We know that the function given is x. Now, the function is given in this manner. So x is being defined at t being equal to 3t cubed minus 2t squared plus 4t minus 1. At this point, this function is not defined at any initial condition rather than t. That's why we're having t in all the points where the t is given in our function. So we need to find the function of uh, velocity. That is what we'll get when you differentiate the uh, function of displacement so dx over dt which is a change in displacement over a given period of time which would be the velocity function with respect to time which would basically give us if we differentiate this we'll get 9t squared minus 4t plus 4. Now we need to find the velocity at the initial condition where the time is firstly zero so the velocity at 0 will be 9, wherever there is t, we plug in for 0, then 4, 0, plus 4. And then v at 0 is simply equivalent to 4. Now velocity, as you can see, is basically measured in meters per second. So this is your answer. Now this is at time being equal to 0. Now let's say we pick the point at time being equal to 1.5. Now the time is in seconds, so we know that. So we'll say V at the time, which is 1.5, is equivalent to 9, wherever this T, we put 1.5 squared minus 4 times 1.5 plus 4. If we compute this, we'll get our velocity to be equivalent to 18.25 meters per second. And this is a velocity value at that initial condition. Now we know that the velocity function with respect to time is given to be 9t squared minus 4t plus 4. Now in order for us to find the acceleration, we need to use this velocity function to find the acceleration by differentiating it. So the, deriv the derivative, sorry, of the velocity with respect to time will result into us having the acceleration which is of respect to time. And if we differentiate it, we'll basically get 18t minus 4. 
We're differentiating these functions using the power because as you can see, we're having polynomial functions which are basic. And we can actually differentiate most polynomials that are in this kind of way using the power. So acceleration as a function of time is 18t minus 4. Now at the initial condition where the time is 0, what would be our acceleration? So acceleration at 0 is equal to 18 at 0 minus 4. Therefore the acceleration at 0 is minus 4 meters per second squared, which basically gives us a retardation. Now at the time being equivalent to 1.5 seconds, acceleration at 1.5 will give you 18 times 1.5 minus 4, which will give us acceleration at 1.5 to be equivalent to 23 meters per second squared. So this is how we go about finding or solving questions where we have one quantity depending on another. And uh, the concept of rate of change in the case where you're looking at the application of differentiation. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any queries, you can reach me on WhatsApp on the line 077-149-5252. Remember, slow progress is better than no progress. Unless you're the judge for becoming statistic. And let's push for that A+.